Welcome back to the channel guys. So today I have a pretty cool one to share with you. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm, I'm really into these books. You know, these books about games and they're just really sweet. I love having physical books with a bunch of information, stuff about the games, artwork, all that kind of crazy stuff. I have so many of them. These are just a very small handful. But today what I wanted to look at was this new book from Evan Amos. Amos? Amos? I'm pretty sure it's Amos. Whatever, right? I can never say people's names correctly. But the game console, a photographic history from Atari to Xbox. So this is taking it to a whole new level. I was extremely excited for this book. Wow, there's even like some texture on this uh, NES controller. That's kind of cool. It's glossy and then textured. Pretty neat stuff. So there's over 250 pages in this thing. And I'm gonna share a few of them with you, just a handful, just to give you a taste of what you would be in store if you grab this book. I purchased this myself on Amazon for about 22 bucks. They did have a little deal going on where you got $5 off of any books over 20. So I think in the end it was about $18. If you can grab this for 22 or so, definitely worth it. I think there's digital Kindle edition as well, but me, I don't care about that stuff. I want physical books. What's cool about this is that if you know this guy, he's actually pretty famous in the retro gaming community and you know, up through now. So what this guy has done is, he talks about it in this book too, in the introduction, that he was really into editing Wikipedia entries. But what it was was that, you know, it was so hard for people to put up pictures, you know, copyrighted pictures and stuff like that. You know, people having ownership over, uh, you know, photographs that they've taken and you can't upload those to Wikipedia. So he set out to clean it up and get, you know, some nice images that he owned and putting them up for free use on Wikipedia. And this book contains a lot of his, you know, photographs and whatnot. A lot of cool stuff broken down to the, to the level of the board, disassembled and the history of these consoles. So it's not just a basic like, oh, just you got NES and Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. This thing goes back and to some obscure stuff. So let's go ahead and open it up and just take a look at a few pages. I, I, I don't wanna spoil everything here, but just give you kind of a, an idea of what you would get in yourself in store for. So I'm really digging this thing. You got all the way from the first generation up into, uh, what do we got here? The eighth generation, all the new stuff. Nintendo Switch, the uh, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, even the Ouya and the Game Stick. I never bought a Game Stick. I always thought about doing it. I'm kind of glad I didn't. The Nvidia Shield uh, TV, Steam Link, so much awesome stuff. The, the pictures, the photographs in this book are flipping amazing. There's a ton of information. It's not just photographs. There's information behind it as well. You know, you're getting the some of the specs for the system, the launch price. I really love that the launch prices are put in here because I always found that stuff interesting. A lot of breakdowns just exposed. Boom, open up the console. Magnavox Odyssey, 1978. A lot of little blurbs of information. Despite its enormous size, the Odyssey 2 is almost completely empty inside. <laughs> That's funny, and television. Look at that, the board. I think this is really cool stuff. Let's skip around a little bit. The Interton VC4000, I don't know what the heck that is. But it's interesting and I'm gonna read about it. 35 plus games released for it, launch price. Ah, 500 Deutschmarks. So that's probably one of the reasons why I don't know it. It was a, a European thing. The Video Brain, I've heard of the Video Brain. The Atari 800, uh, the Video Game Crash, here we go. So it's broken up by year, it's going through and bam, the Video Game Crash it talks about that third generation, jumping into that. So, oh man, the SG-1000 came out in 83, the Mark II, the Famicom. Wow, pretty sweet stuff. I've disassembled these, so I've seen the internals, but that is really cool stuff, I think, getting to see the inside of some of these consoles, the twin Famicom. Been looking to get one of these. I don't know if I will, though. Um, I do have, uh, what you call it, a Famicom disk system, but I think it would be pretty cool to have that as well. The Casio PV-1000, and there's the board. Look at all those cables, holy crap. That's nuts. Let's skip ahead a bit. The fourth generation, what do we have? 
And the fourth, oh, the PC Engine. Look at the different models. There's the PC Engine, the Core Graphics, Core Graphics 2. Pretty cool stuff. That was a pretty expensive console back then. 24,800 yen. Pretty cool stuff. I love the PC Engine. The Atari XE game system. The Mega Drive, hell yeah. And a breakdown of the controller. I think that's really sweet. The Game Boy. Games released a thousand plus. This thing was a beast, guys. Launch price, 89 bucks. Wow, I didn't realize how, I mean, that's, you know, today's money, that would probably be closer to like 140, 150 bucks maybe. But I didn't realize that that's how much this sold for back then. I didn't pay for it myself. It was, you know, bought for me, but uh, that's not a bad price for something so awesome. That's probably why one of the reasons the Game Boy was so successful um, was it had a good launch price. Look at the Atari Lynx. Yeah, there's a lot of awesome games for it, but it was 179 bucks. And it released like the same year as the Game Boy. That's crazy. There's the internals. This thing is uh, pretty crazy taking it apart with that little lamp back there and for your screen. <laughs> I've taken one of these apart and I was just like, oh my God, I don't really want to mess with this. The Neo Geo AES launch price, $649. Man, that is crazy. A bunch of the information as far as the board, the Neo Geo CD thrown in there. The Game Gear. See, this is what I'm talking about. The Game Gear released a year after the Game Boy, launched at $159. Horrible battery life. Some pretty sweet games though. Essentially they were Sega Master System games, but still pretty sweet. I had a Game Gear, I actually had a blue one too. Wish I never got rid of that, but I had a Game Gear, I had an Atari Lynx, I had a Game Boy, but what stuck with me over the years, it was the Game Boy, because that success with that low launch price and that Nintendo name behind it, having Tetris packed in, I think that really led to the success there and just, you know, it, you know, these systems were great. The Atari, somebody would like knocked me and said, oh, you, you know, you hated, like I didn't hate any of this stuff. I love the Game Gear. I love the Atari Lynx. There was some sweet ass games for it, but there is no denying the powerhouse of the Game Boy. Over a thousand games released because of how successful it was. So there were so many options, despite it having crappier visuals than the Game Gear or the Atari Lynx, it was still so sweet. Oh my God, system sold 41 plus million for the Super Famicom. Awesome stuff. The Commodore CD TV. I've never heard of that, but I'm gonna read about that one. Let's see, what else do we got here? Lots of crazy stuff. The Jaguar, they even have the controller. I had one of these for a short while. And man, all those little buttons. This thing is not the most comfortable controller, you know what I'm saying? But hey, there it is. The Virtual Boy, they even have that blowed out and disassembled for you. Pretty cool, the R-Zone. Oh my God, whenever I think of the R-Zone, I think of Lord Carnage over there. Classic uh, game room. <laughs> The R Zone. I've never played with one of these. I remember seeing them in the TV, in the not in the TV, but yeah, on the TV advertised. But I remember seeing them in the store. Never bothered with them. The Nintendo 64. Hey, phone, shut up. I'm trying to record here. <laughs> Love the Nintendo 64. We've actually got some content coming up on that bad boy pretty soon. The FM Towns Marty. Wow, 98,000 yen back in '93. The sixth generation. Let's skip around a bit. Man, I said I wasn't going to spoil this book, which, you know, just give you a taste. The Xbox 360, just got an Xbox 360 again the other day. A little Black Friday deal. Hopefully it uh, it lasts. Uh, what else? The Kinect. Oh my god. The PlayStation 3 models and revisions. So a bunch of information on that. What the hell is that? A PlayStation Move Gun? I don't remember ever seeing that. I have the AIM controller for the uh, PS4. That's That's kind of cool. The Gizmondo, what? <laughs> oh my God, the Game Wave. What the hell is that? Oh my God, I'm about to read up on that one. The Hyperscan, I remember that garbage. <laughs> VTech B-Flash, they even have the little kid consoles in there. The DS, oh my God, look at this. The PlayStation TV. Oh, cool, I get to see what the board looks like without opening mine. Hell yeah, I wonder if that's gonna be the same board that's inside the uh, PlayStation Classic, right? The Wii U. Oh, they've got some Amiibos in there. What? Breakdown of some controllers. The Xbox One. 
up to the Nintendo Switch. And I think there's some little random stuff back here. The Ouya, the game stick. Like I said, I was, I was actually interested in grabbing one of these back in the day, but passed up on it. You know, kind of a defunct thing there. The Fire TV, the Nexus player, never mess with that. The Nvidia Shield TV, I've, man, one day maybe I'll get one of these. I'm gonna have to. I have a Steam Link and the controller. I know so many people hate this controller, but I actually really, really liked it with the haptic feedback. Um, whatever the hell these things are, the little touch pads. It like felt weird using them, but I got so used to them playing, uh, what was I playing? Don't Starve, Don't Starve Together. I think that was really awesome, an awesome game. Love playing that on my Steam Link in the, in my living room. It has a list of some excluded systems. There's some ones that are glaring, I guess. The ZX Spectrum, MSX, and a handful of others. But hey, this is still a very huge book full of information that covers tons of systems. And it's cool that they do list the stuff that was excluded. I wonder if it says why, but it isn't an exhaustive list for various reasons. A few noteworthy consoles have been excluded. This is the list of Consoles and gaming heavy computers that were left out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Maybe they could do a follow-up and get their hands on some of these. So I know this guy was talking about um, with producing these pictures and this book that, you know, it started out with Wikipedia doing that stuff and, you know, taking pictures of all his consoles and then reaching out to tons of people in the community so he can get them professional photographs done to make sure the Wikipedia articles, articles, oh my God, the articles were top notch, everything looking great. So it seems like, you know, the community was a big help, really awesome stuff. I highly recommend this book if you're into gaming history, uh, you know, even photographs, whatever. If you're into gaming books, get this thing. Keep selling out on Amazon and people start price gouging on it. 22 bucks, if you can. Grab it, highly recommended. Really appreciate you guys stopping and hanging out with me for these few minutes, peeping this badass book out. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. What are you waiting for? We got tons of stuff coming up, man. Make sweet love to that notification bell. Yeah. And with that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out, bye bye and boom.